Okay, this is Victor Conti uh, here today to talk to you about altitude training or simulated altitude training and, and uh, how that's evolved over the years into what we do here at SNAC, uh, which we now call oxygen modulation training. So to give you an idea of the history of, uh, of altitude training, it all started in the 1940s with uh, Russian aviation. And they used to take the pilots, they didn't have pressurized cabins at the time, so they used to take the pilots up to a uh, 14,000 foot elevation where they had a, a training camp there so they could become acclimated to the low oxygen uh, so that when they were flying these airplanes that uh, that they didn't develop uh, you know low oxygen symptoms so it started with uh, training pilots and then eventually the Russians started taking their athletes up to train at these altitude uh, centers and they realized in the initial stages that the benefits were after a period of time two or three weeks that uh, you began to see an enlargement and, and the red blood cells and the number of red blood cells and a benefit in terms of oxygen uptake and utilization which would help the stamina and endurance of, of athletes. So the first uh, type of training was what they called live high, train high. And once again this, this started back in as far back as the 1940s. Then uh, in 1987 there was some research that was done by a Dr. Levine uh, in New Mexico where they took a group of 3,000 meter runners and they tried something instead of live high, train high, it was live high, train low. So every day they would drive from up in the mountains and train down at a lower elevation and then they would go back up and sleep uh, at night and, and of course that was the second uh, generation and they called it live high a train low and, and this particular group of 3,000 meter runners on average increased their, improved their time in the 3,000 meters by over seven seconds. So this really got everybody's attention and the next thing you know uh, everybody was trying to to hold training camps at, at elevation and of course this low oxygen and these adaptive mechanisms um, it increased like I said the number and size of red blood cells and, and it was more for stamina and endurance and so triathletes and marathoners and long distance runners um, long distance cyclists were the ones th that were receiving these benefits and then the uh, the next generation is uh, they began to build these tents and they had hypoxicators which are machines that remove oxygen molecules and people like Lance Armstrong and others uh, would sleep in these tents so they would sleep at night and breathe low oxygen and then of course they would train uh, during the day wherever they lived or, or at sea level and they found that these benefits um, did carry over and then thereafter the next generation of course that was still just a simulated version of live high train low and then some researchers came out in in the beginning of 2014 and they tried looking at high exertion instead of targeting endurance type athletes they looked at the effects and the initial study was done uh, on stationary bikes and they had them breathe, wear a mask, much like this one right here, this type of mask that was hooked up to a uh, hypoxicator, and they would breathe about 14% oxygen, which uh, was a simulated 10,000 foot elevation. And then they would have them sprint all out for 30 seconds and then recover for a minute. And sprint for 30 seconds and recover for a minute. And then they did muscle biopsies thereafter and they realized that they were actually increasing the number of type 2B fast twitch muscle fiber. So instead of the benefit becoming one of stamina and endurance, it had to do with explosive power and speed. So but after I read this study at the beginning of 2014, immediately I recognized that, well, 
for boxers and for football players and baseball players, others that need to de develop their core muscles. And But we certainly wanted to have these anabolic effects and develop more fast twitch muscle fiber. I bought a non-motorized treadmill and a couple of these hypoxicators. And we began, uh, the first boxer that we did this with was uh, uh, Nonito Denaire uh, at that time who was fighting as a, a bantamweight. And so we would have them sprint for a period of, of ramp up uh, on this non-motorized treadmill. This is one here. We have another one over there. It's called a skill mill. That's called a curve. And we would have them ramp up and sprint for a period of, of six, seven seconds and then jump off. And then they would ramp up again. So they would do five sets of 15 seconds, ramping up for nine and all out 100% sprint for six seconds. And sure enough, we started this in maybe July of 2014. And sure enough, this same group of scientists came out with a, a follow-up study that was published in September of 2014. And they were using the exact Woodway curve machine and the exact hypoxico hypoxicators. And they were sprinting for six seconds. We were ramping up for stability, but they would do all out sprint for six seconds and 10 repetitions, and of course we were ramping up and uh, doing nine seconds of ramp and six seconds all out and then jump off. So it was a very similar protocol, and it turned out that yes, they were uh, significantly improving what they called speed endurance. So this means that they, they took the distance that they could run in a six second all out sprint times 10 repetitions, and they added all those distances together and they came up with a total distance. Then they trained for three times a week for four weeks, so after a total of 12 sessions, and they had two groups, one that was breathing ambient sea level oxygen through a mask. They just had the machine set to, to let the, the room temperature or room um, uh, air go through, and the others were breathing about uh, a 14% or simulated 10,000 foot elevation. So they did a field study initially to determine in the 10 repetitions, you know, how far they could, when they added these all up, what that total distance was. So at the end of this month of training, they went back and did the original uh, compared to the baseline studies. And they, the group that uh, just did the training with the ambient air, they ran uh, the distance was 17% farther. Well, the group that had done the low oxygen training with high exertion sprinting, they ran 33% farther. So the gains, this was the first time this ever came out, September of 2014, the gains made using all out exertion in low oxygen compared to all out exertion and the repetitions in sea level oxygen were double, 33% compared to 17%. So I realized this is really basically having anabolic effects because it was all about acceleration and explosion and all out exertion. So we were really the first ever to use this sort of, uh, you know, what we'll call the fourth stage of hypoxic training. And then we began to, to understand that what this did was it was having effects upon the hormones and increasing growth hormone and increasing testosterone. And it was actually uh, stimulating the production of this type 2B fast switch muscle fibers, which is what you need to be explosive and powerful. And, and of course, this would be of great benefit uh, to boxers. So we started doing this uh, with a lot of uh, elite athletes. And then, uh, of course, using the mask was somewhat restrictive. So then uh, collectively uh, with a group of, of other scientists that I talked to and worked with, we developed this if you turn the camera around over here, you can see the high altitude dome. And we've got six hypoxicators hooked up to this. And what this did was it enabled us to put any sort of equipment in there, get rid of the mask, 
free everything up and then they could, instead of just being on a treadmill and sprinting on a treadmill, you could virtually take any sort of e uh, equipment or any type of training and do it inside. But once again, instead of being more stamina and endurance oriented, this was about explosive power and speed. So you could do box jumps, you could do all sorts of plyometric uh, stuff, you could lift weights, you could, do, you know, do it freed everything up by having this uh, altitude dome.